I've always felt fascinated by the concept of emergence. Consider any system made of different smaller parts, like a flock formed by hundreds of birds. This flock has its own size, shape and direction, among other things, but none of its individual members has those exact properties. No specific bird decides the direction of the whole flock, it's something that just pops up from all of them interacting together. That's emergence the appearance of properties or behaviors in a system that do not exist in any of its elements alone. They only emerge as a product of their interaction. This concept so simple, yet it can explain any system we know. I've been seeing this idea repeated over and over again everywhere. I just never paid any attention to it. But it actually rules the universe. Everything can be defined as an emergent product of other things. Just take any random example. There's no specific part of a plane that can fly by itself, but when you put all of them together, it flies. Molecules emerge from atoms, proteins from molecules, cells from proteins, tissues from cells, organs from tissues, systems from organs, and finally, we, as conscious beings, are just an emergent behavior product of the interaction of a couple of systems. So, let's simulate a human. In 1986, a guy named Craig Reynolds developed a very interesting software. It consisted of a group of agents that followed a set of three simple rules. With only this, he was able to closely replicate the behavior of a flock of birds. He called these agents birdoid objects, so the discovery came to be known as the Boyd's algorithm. This type of artificial intelligence is known as swarm intelligence. Instead of having one main control unit, they are decentralized systems in which each individual follows a set of rules. Intelligence is, though, just an emergent property. It's actually a very easy to implement algorithm. Its genius resides in its simplicity. I will be making this project in Godot, an open source video game engine that has been growing a lot in the last few years. You can find the source code in the comment section of this video. Like, a link to it. Let's take a quick look at the three rules Craig Reynolds came up with. Each of these will output the velocity that the void should follow to comply with it. The sum of all velocities will determine the movement in each frame. I find this idea so beautiful. Like the behavior of a void is just the eternal fight between rules. The first of them is cohesion. Any void must aim to be at the center of all other nearby voids. This ensures that they fly in groups and not by themselves. Secondly, we have separation. Voids try to maintain a minimum distance between them so they don't bump into one another. And finally, there is alignment. Each void tries to match the speed and direction of its nearby peers. After looking at all the rules together, I notice they have one thing in common. Voids require to know which other voids are nearby. This was actually the hardest part of the algorithm to code. There are two ways to accomplish this. We can simulate the senses of real birds by casting rays with a physics engine and checking if they collide with other voids. Or we can just access the position of every void and find how far apart they are from each other. We'll be using this last method because it's much more efficient and easier to implement. In each frame, we iterate over the voids and check, for each one of them, the distance to all of the others. If void B is near enough void A, we save B to the array of neighbors of A. And so, we need an array of neighbors for each of our little guys, which is just an array of arrays. Yet this method is not the most efficient. Say that each measurement takes one millisecond and we have three voids. The whole process would take six milliseconds. If we had ten voids, we would need ninety milliseconds. This description we're doing of how the time to run scales with more data is known as time complexity. This algorithm is quadratic time since the time it takes to run grows as a quadratic function of the size of the input. We can make it better by not checking voids whose neighbors have already been calculated. So, when we find B as a neighbor of A, we also add A as a neighbor of B. This is somewhat better, but it's still quadratic time. As far as I know, it can't be improved for this problem unless you modify the problem itself. Let me know in the comments if you know something else. Let's code the first rule. To calculate the cohesion velocity, we just need to calculate the average position of the nearby voids and then generate a vector pointing at it. This is the first result I got. Yeah, I forgot an important step to make it look good. 
boats must point towards the direction they're going. As you can see, I was physically simulating the voids here, but I was forcefully changing their positions from code, which was quite absurd. At some point I realized this and just removed the voids from the physics simulation. Ok, so let's say that void A and void B get too close, but we want them to maintain a minimum distance. We need a vector that tells us in which direction A should move to get away from B, which is just the vector that goes from B to A. Now we multiply this vector by a value that gets higher the closer they get, which will give them a natural bounciness. We do this for every void that's closer than the minimum distance, and we average the resulting velocity. As you can see, the results of cohesion and separation alone are nothing spectacular. They make groups and keep a distance from one another, but they just stay still until we apply the third rule. Alignment is what makes the flock flow. It's the easiest of the three to calculate. We just take the velocities of all nearby voids and average them. That's it. But see how that changes everything. This is something completely different from what we had before. We've got the original voids algorithm covered, but it can still be enhanced a lot. Let's look at some cool things we can do with it. Right now we can only enjoy our voids for a few seconds, until they just go out of the borders and disappear forever. It's quite boring. We'll be adding an extra rule that encourages them to re-enter the screen. When a void leaves the borders, we'll start up a counter that won't reset to zero until the void comes back. We will multiply this counter by a direction vector that goes from the void towards the center of the screen. This makes the void's tendency to return higher as time passes, so flocks will just bounce back into the screen soon after they leave. I've also tweaked some other things such as the velocity and number of voids to make it more fun to watch, which is probably the most important thing. Now we can see our flock almost all the time, but it gets quite boring after a moment. Once all voids group up in the same flock, there's no way they're going to split up, which makes total sense. Why should they? That's the most stable state they can reach. To spice things up a bit, I reckon we need to add some external randomness to the equation. So let's make a predator we can control with the mouse. That, of course, will be another rule, which will output a high escape velocity when the predator is closer than a given threshold. Now, this feels substantially better. We can see much richer flock dynamics. They band and disband as they need to, forming graceful patterns as they do. As a final touch, we can try to make this more aesthetic. First, we are going to add the option of poets leaving trails behind them, which will make the patterns more visible. To do that, we just need to use a 2D line renderer for each void, which takes a vector of 2D points and makes a line connecting them. In this case, those points are just the last positions of a void. You can get some cool patterns playing with different trail configurations. Yes, I've also noticed they look like spermatozoids. I don't have a fix for that. To be honest, I like it more without trails. Finally, there's one thing I've been wanting to test during the whole project, which is changing the color of each void depending on how many neighbors it has. It isn't terrible, but the trails clearly need to be synchronized. Yes, that's much better. You can subscribe and like the video if you'd like to support this kind of content. I've had quite some fun making these… things. Emerging behaviors are mesmerizing and seeing one magically appear after typing a few lines of code makes them even more intriguing. So I'll probably give a try to some other emergence project soon. See you! If we had 10 voids, we would need 90 milliseconds. 10 nines time. <laughs>